Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Really exciting news for you guys. I am officially Italian now. If you follow me on Instagram, you know the news. I finally got my dual citizenship. Much more on that in an upcoming video. I'm dedicating an entire video just to that process. So if you have any questions about it, leave a comment below and I'll try to incorporate it. So now that I'm like so Italian, let me start over. Ciao, bentornati sul mio canale. Oh, se questo è il primo video qui, benvenuti. What I want to talk to you guys about today is the ingredient that has the ability to level up so many dishes. I'm talking pesto. A nose full of basil is one of my favorite scents and homemade pesto beats store-bought pesto any day. So if you don't know how to make pesto, I'll show you how. But this video is about more than just the classic pesto. I'm gonna give you the building blocks to be able to make a variety of amazing kinds of pesto. I want to open your mind to the things that pesto can be. That's where the fun comes in and that is where you can get creative. First, it helps to understand the simple elements that make a pesto. So let's look at how to make your classic pesto. You've got your basil, your Parmigiano Reggiano, your pine nuts, garlic, olive oil, and a bit of salt. The garlic, olive oil, and salt are an assumed addition here, so we're really just going to pay attention to the basil, Parmigiano Reggiano, and pine nuts. So another way to look at these ingredients is by breaking them down this way. Leafy herb, hard, savory cheese, and nuts. Using this guideline, let's swap some things out. Instead of the basil, let's do parsley. Instead of Parmigiano Reggiano, let's do Pecorino Romano. And instead of pine nuts, let's do walnuts. Hey guys, Katie here, obviously. Uh, so I'm making some pesto, doing the parsley one right now. And you know, it's been a rough week for a few different reasons and it's not getting any easier because I just broke this food processor. I don't know how I did it. I blew the fuse and then it just, and, and now it's not working. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this. My favorite kinds of pasta to go with the pesto would be like cavatappi, fusilli, something that's shorter, littler, with little spaces that the pesto can grab onto. I don't have any of those right now, so I'm using a rigatoni, which is still gonna be great because it's still got the little ridges, the pesto's gonna nuzzle itself in there, hang out on the little inside and take a little nap on, on that inner circle. Here's a little tip for you. When you're adding a pesto to a pasta, to make it the ultimate smooth, saucy pesto with the pasta, add a little bit of the starchy pasta water. Makes a big difference. Mm. Okay, now we go back to our elements and broaden it even more. In the leafy herb category, let's broaden that out to vegetables. In addition to hard savory cheese, let's just put umami because that's what those aged cheeses really bring. So something like nutritional yeast or anchovies bring that same element. And for nuts, let's widen it to seeds. Although, fun fact, pine nuts are technically a seed, so seeds were already really here. Using this formula, let me show you some of the pestos Connor and I have had so much fun making just in the past few weeks. You might recognize this one I did in the video where I explored Trani. It is chimeri rapa, a popular vegetable here that's kind of in the broccoli rob family. Anchovies and almonds. Or how about the pumpkin pesto that was the highlight of our pizza night a few weeks back? That was pumpkin, parmigiano reggiano, and pumpkin seeds. And for a little kick, we added some chili pepper too. Dude, your pumpkin pesto is so good. Yeah, very proud of that. And I can't forget about the purple pesto that you all were loving on my Instagram story. I made that with red cabbage, pecorino cheese, and walnuts. You see, pesto can be so many things. And if you're Italian and you're scratching your head at this video, don't get me wrong, classic pesto is amazing, but experimenting a bit with these elements also yields 
delicious results. So don't be shy, bust out your food processor, mortar and pestle, mocajete, whatever you've got, and grind away. Ci vediamo la prossima. Don't forget to keep it quirky. Ciao. And of course, I wanna say a big, huge thank you to the Quirky Club, everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. And very last thing, I am launching a podcast with the Food 52 Podcast Network and the incredible Jen Panomrat. Jen eats life, she's amazing. We're co-hosting a show called The Either Side Eaters. It's about food cultures all around the world. It's gonna be amazing. And we would love for you to call in with your questions having to do with anything food, culture, and fun. So I'm leaving a link in the description box below for you to do that. And grazie.